hey guys you're yeah, welcome back to my channel today thank you so much for stopping by in this video we'll be sewing this beautiful underboss corset dress as you can see on your screen so in my last video we drafted out the pattern for this dress in case you've not seen that tutorial i'm going to leave the link in the comment section so go ahead and watch that tutorial before you come join us on this particular one it's going to help you understand better okay so this is the outcome i used three yards of ankara fabric half yard of doll face and quarter yard of um chantilly lace okay so if you're interested keep on watching and let's get started so guys after drafting out my patterns i went ahead to place them on my fabric folded into two as you can see so i'm cutting the yoke on my doll face fabric i'm cutting the posterior area on my ankara fabric and i'm cutting the um, basque waistline on my doll face fabric and all the fabrics here are folded into two so don't forget that your center front should be on fold okay and i also went ahead to add stitching allowance all the way around for the yoke i added half an inch allowance all the way around the yoke but i didn't add any allowance on the arm or area so what i'm going to do is to go ahead and cut as you can see i've already marked out my allowance okay so i have the allowance on the base on the neckline area on the shoulder and i didn't add allowance to the arm or area so this is my center front and my side front my center front is on fold and i added half an inch on the neckline area on the side and on the base i'm also going to go ahead and cut out so do not forget that your center front should be on fold okay so after cutting out the center front this is what i have for the side front remember i didn't add stitching allowance to my pattern paper while i was drafting so i went ahead to add 1.5 inches for my stitching allowance on the side of the side front i hope you understand so i added half an inch on the other side just like i did for the other patterns okay so the only difference here is i added my stitching allowance of 1.5 inches to the side the other allowance that i have on the other area areas are just half an inch allowance just like i did for the other patterns so after cutting out this is what i have i have two side fronts and one center front because my center front is on fold i'm going to place them side by side so you guys can see so this is our posterior pattern this is what it looks like the next one we are going to cut is the basque waistline okay so i went ahead to fold my fabric into two your basque also should be on fold and i placed my pattern paper leaving half an inch on the upper area which is going to serve as my stitching allowance okay and i added my stitching allowance of 1.5 inches since i didn't add stitching allowance on the pattern paper and on the other side i added half an inch so you can see my 1.5 stitching allowance okay 1.5 inches stitching allowance so once i remove my pattern paper this is what i have i have just um one single piece okay i'll go ahead and arrange my fabric in in place just so you guys know what we are working with so we have our center front the side front um the basque waistline and the yoke so i'm going to remove my pattern paper for the yoke and i'm going to place them exactly how we're supposed to sit okay so these are the um, fabrics we'll be using for the front the next thing i'll do is to go ahead and cut out lining piece for all my fabric except the yoke because the yoke already has lining okay so i've gone ahead to do that and this is what i have so your lining piece should be exactly as the main fabric okay so we are going to start with the basque waistline so i went ahead to also fold my lining piece into two okay after cutting out this is what i have the next one is the side front okay so i have two lining piece for the center front also i have one lining piece okay because it's on fold so the next thing i'm going to do is to iron air stay to all this fabric but before i do that i'm going to use my wording to um part the bustier area so this wording is not that strong and it's not that light either okay so it is medium what i'm going to do is to open my fabric up as you can see i'm going to place the shiny part of this wording on the wrong um part of my fabric and i'm going to go ahead and cut it out exactly as it is after cutting out guys this is what i have what i'm going to do is to trim from the shoulder area the neckline area i mean 
okay just so when i'm sewing my lining to the main fabric it's going to stay flat okay so i'll trim from the armhole area and the neckline area i'm trimming half an inch okay just so my lining will relax well okay after trimming guys this is what i have so the next thing i'm going to do is to iron my hair stay on it and i'm going to iron everything down for the bag guys this is what i have so like i said i didn't add zipper allowance because i want to add loop to the back of my dress so what i did was to add half an inch allowance all the way around okay so remember i added my stitching allowance to the pattern paper for the back so i'm not going to add any stitching allowance on the fabric after cutting out guys this is what i have for the back okay so i'm going to go ahead and cut out my lining piece for the back so guys i've gone ahead to iron the wording and the s day together and this is what it looks like so the next thing i'm going to do is to sew so i'll be using the half an inch allowance that i left on the side okay to sew um the patterns to the fabric together and i'll repeat the same thing for the lining piece i'm going to place them like this and i'll sew by half an inch i've gone ahead to do that guys and this is what i have i also went ahead to iron the seam open just so everything lays flat on the right side and this is what it looks like the next thing i did was to iron sd to the basque waistline after doing that this is what i have so i'm going to go ahead and create my boning channel on this basque area so it depends on what you want i went ahead to cut out my ankara fabric so for the ones you can see on the thumbnail um the boning channel was inside but for this particular one i want to do my boning channel outside because i want to use this ankara um, piece so the ankara piece is two inches on fold it is one inch so when cutting out um the fabric that you want to use for your boning channel make sure you measure your boning okay so because your boning is supposed to pass through um your fabric so the fabric should be wide enough for your boning to pass through so i'm going to place it i'll sew all the way down and i'll turn it over and i'll top stitch okay so you can go ahead and create as many boning channel as you want for me i'm doing one on the center and i'm doing two on the side so it depends on what you want but whatever you do make sure your boning channel does not extend to your stitching allowance so it does not give you issue when you are shaping your dress so i've gone ahead to do um to create my channel all together i have five boning channels okay so after sewing it in place this is what i have whatever you do make sure your channel is wide enough for your boning to pass through so i'm going to now stitch these two together i'm going to first of all go ahead and notch the center of the bustier and i'll notch the center of the basque waistline i'm going to place them center to center as you can see go ahead and pin down and then go ahead and sew using the half an inch allowance that we left okay so i've gone ahead to sew guys and this is what i have this is what it looks like the next thing i'm going to do now is to sew my yoke in place so i've already cut out lining for the yoke remember i folded my fabric into two before cutting out the yoke i'm just going to sew the neckline i'll turn it to the right side and i'll give it a good press i've gone ahead to do that guys this is what i have the only place i sewed is the neckline and i went ahead to iron it flat so i'm going to place the yoke as you can see me doing so i'm going to place it like this I'll turn it over and I'll go ahead and stitch using the half an inch allowance that I left, okay? So go ahead and pin it down and stitch it down. After sewing the yoke in place, guys, this is what I have. This is what it looks like so i went ahead to also sew my lining piece exactly how i sewed the main fabric and this is what it looks like okay so what i'm going to do now is to sew the lining piece and the main fabric together to do that i'm going to turn my yoke over like this and i'm going to place my lining okay the right side of my lining on the right side of my fabric and i'm going to pin so if you're a beginner go ahead and pin all the way around okay 
after pinning i'm going to sew all the way around and i'll turn it inside out through the base i've gone ahead to sew guys and this is what i have you can see how neat the inside is looking okay all the rough edges are inside the um, main fabric so after sewing this is what i have next thing i'm going to do is to pass my boning through the channel that i already created so the widest of this boning is half an inch what i'm going to do now is to cut out my boning okay so make sure your boning is at least half an inch shorter than your fabric okay because you are still going to attach these upper bodies to the lower bodies and you don't want the boning to obstruct it so make sure it is half an inch shorter than the main fabric okay so as you can see me doing i'm marking where i want the boning to stop on my main fabric after doing that i'm concealing the edge of the boning and then i'm going to pass it through all the channels okay so go ahead and do that okay after doing that guys you are going to iron it flat so i'm using a plastic boning you can decide to use a sewable boning but this is a non-sewable boning that is why i'm making it shorter than my main fabric okay so after passing my boning through i'm going to go ahead and iron everything flat just so the boning stays flat okay after doing that i'm going to go ahead and top stitch okay i'm going to sew to hold the base down i'll go ahead and top stitch i've gone ahead to do that i've also gone ahead to shape the basque waistline you can see that it is now pointy okay so i've gone ahead to do that so go ahead and shape where you want to shape okay so guys i've gone ahead to turn my skirt part with my lining piece and this is what it looks like so i sewed all the way around but i didn't sew the waistline because we are going to be attaching the basque waistline to it so what i'll do is to fold the waist area into two and i'll mark the center on that center i'm going to draw a straight line as you can see me doing so you don't need to add that to this um front pattern because it has a basque waistline i'm going to bring in my upper bodies and i'm going to place that center on this center as you can see so the sharp edge of my basque waistline i placed it on that straight line and i'm going to go ahead and trace out what i have on this waistline as you can see me doing after doing that i'm going to remove my upper body so we already have the shape here but we'll be needing stitching allowance to stitch both um, piece together so to achieve that i'm going to mark half an inch all the way around this waistline after doing that i'm going to cut okay so we'll be using this half an inch to sew both piece together after doing that i'm going to bring back my um, upper bodies and i'll place it as you guys can see everything aligns so what i'm going to do is to head over to my sewing machine and i'm going to sew this basque waistline so what i'll do is to sew one part first i'll place it like this i'll sew to the end after sewing one part notch the center then go ahead and turn it to the other side and then sew so i've gone ahead to do that guys and this is what i have so after sewing go ahead and iron so the basque um, waistline stays flat this is what it looks like on the wrong side you can see that everything is looking neat okay so we are done with the front pattern so go ahead and work on the back pattern for now okay so guys for the back pattern i've gone ahead to cut out lining piece for the back and like i mentioned earlier i want to add loop to the back so i went ahead to cut out this um piece of fabric this ankara fabric the wideness is one inch i want to use this to create my loop okay so what i'll do is to fold it okay i'll fold one end like this and i also fold the other end after folding i'll fold the two ends together okay so it will give me a neat finishing and i'm going to sew on a straight line okay so go ahead and do that the fabric should be as long as you want it so i've gone ahead to sew it in place and this is what i have next is to determine how long i want the loop to be so i'll be using two two inches for the loop okay what i'll do is to mark two inches and i'll use this particular one to cut out as many loops as i want okay after cutting guys i'm going to now mark where i want to place the loop on the back of my fabric okay?
so guys after cutting out the loops i'm going to mark so i'll start by going down by half an inch because i'll still be sewing my lining piece to this main fabric so i need that half an inch to turn the lining over so as you can see i'm placing both fabrics side by side okay just so it aligns from that point i'll be marking one one inch apart okay i don't want the back of this dress to be opened at all that is why i'm marking one one inch apart but if you want yours to be open you can do one 1.5 2 inches or 3 inches it depends on what you want after marking i'll make sure both fabric are lined and then i'm going to head over to my sewing machine and i'll start placing the loop on the marked areas okay i'll place and i'll stitch down okay the next thing is to cut out my modesty panel so i want to cover the back like i mentioned i don't want the back to be open so the length of this modesty panel is eight inches and the wideness is nine and quarter inch so the reason why the length is eight inches is because i took out half an inch from um the upper part of this back and i took out half an inch from the base half an inch plus half an inch is one inch the half an inch that i took out is going to serve as my stitching allowance so the uh, modesty panel is not supposed to get to the upper part neither is it supposed to get to the base so the length of this back piece is nine inches i minus to one inch because of the half an inch half an inch that i took from the base and the upper area so i've gone ahead to sew my loop to all the lines that i created okay and this is what it looks like the next thing i'm going to do is to place my modesty panel so choose where you want to place your modesty panel so i'm going to place it place it on this side and i'm going to cover it up with my lining as you can see and then i'll pin all the way around okay after pinning i'm going to go ahead and sew the neckline the opening at the back um the sides the only place i'm not going to sew is the arm o area and the base next thing is to um, create this um button loop okay on the other side so i'm using the same fabric that i used for my loop i went ahead to pin it to the center of this um other side okay i'm going to cover it up with my lining and i also go ahead and sew after sewing i went ahead to turn it inside out and i ironed everything flat so this is what i have the next thing i'll do is to create boning channel for the back so i'm going to mark half an inch which is the wideness of my boning immediately after the loop and i'm going to just sew a straight line okay so we don't need to create boning channel for this okay we are using the lining and the fabric for the boning channel so i went ahead to sew half an inch all the way down after doing that i'll just go ahead and pass my boning through okay this is to enable the um loop area to be firm okay when lacing your loop is not going to fold the boning is going to make it look really firm okay so after passing it through make sure that the boning is also about half an inch shorter than the main fabric just like we did for the front i'm gonna have to pass my boning through and this is what i have guys so the next thing i did was to turn the skirt parts using my lining okay and on the waist area i only turned the zipper allowance area okay as you can see i left the other side open because i want to pass my upper body through that part so what i'm going to do is to bring in my upper bodies as you can see okay i'm going to now pass it through this other side in order to achieve that while i was sewing my lining to the main fabric for the skirt part i left an opening on the um side okay i'm going to show you guys shortly so this is how i'm going to pass it through and i'll be using the half an inch allowance to sew that is why i said your boning should not get to the base okay because it's going to obstruct your sewing okay so like i said i left an opening on the base of this skirt and i'm going to show you guys so this is the opening what i'll do is to open it up and i'll pass my hand through okay as you can see i'm going to pick the um upper bodies okay and i'm going to open it up i'll bring it inside as you can see me doing and then i'm going to align everything so remember i said i've already closed the zipper allowance area so i'm going to align this after aligning i'm going to pin all the way around so you're going to take your time to do this i'm doing this because the um i want the rough edges to be inside the lining 
okay so that's why i'm doing this so after pinning i'm going to use the half an inch allowance to sew after doing this i'm going to repeat the same process for the other side or the back So guys after sewing the back in place this is what i have as you can see okay i'll show you guys what it looks like on the wrong side you can see that all the rough edges is hidden in the skirt and this is how neat it should look okay so after doing that guys i repeated the same thing for the other side of the back okay and this is what i have so the next thing you're going to do is to fix your zipper so i don't have any zipper right now i'm just going to close it up and i'll fix the zipper later so fix your zipper open your sleeves sorry your slits and iron everything in place i'm gonna have to sew the back close okay next thing i did was to cut out another one inch piece of fabric um it should be as long as you want okay i went ahead to use it to lace my loop so sew it exactly how you did when you were cutting out sewing the piece you used to um create your loop area so i went ahead to use the piece of fabric to lace my loop after doing that i'm going to bring in my front piece okay and i'm going to join the shoulders so i'm going to open them up lining facing lining and fabric facing line um fabric sorry and i'm going to go ahead and sew after sewing i'll also go ahead and shape the side of my dress so go ahead and place your measurements and use it to shape the side of your dress after shaping i went ahead to turn it inside out and this is what i have so guys i didn't sew to the arm o area because i have not fixed my sleeves yet okay so next thing we're going to do is to cut out our sleeves so i've gone ahead to cut out these basic sleeves i'm sure you guys know how to um if you don't know how to i'm going to leave a link in the comment section you can use the tutorial to cut out your own basic sleeves so i have two sleeves here what i did was to reduce these sleeves by about three inches okay so the length of my sleeves is 24 inches i reduced it by three inches or four inches because i still need stitching allowance from these basic sleeves okay so i'm going to now replace it with my flare to cut out my flare i'm going to fold my fabric into two as you can see so i'm cutting a 720 degrees flare which is a full circle flare so i folded the fabric over again so i folded it into four and then i'm going to fold it over for the last time so this fabric is folded into eight and i'll be cutting out the two um flare together so what i did was to go down by two inches i didn't measure this because i want to pleat it to the base of the sleeves okay so i went ahead to go down by two inches and i connected after doing that go ahead and determine the length of your flare okay so i need to end the flare and i need to attach the flare to um the basic sleeves so i'm going to take 5.5 inches so it depends on what you want okay i'll mark 5.5 inches all the way around after doing that i'm going to go ahead and cut okay after cutting guys i have two full um flare okay one for the right sleeves and the other one is for the left hand sleeves okay so this is what i have what i'm going to do is to split it open okay we need it to be open in order to be able to join it to um the main sleeves okay after opening it up guys this is what i have so you can see how full the flare is okay you can see how full it is so what i'm going to do is to gather this flare to the base of my um sleeves okay so before i do that i'm going to go ahead and m the base so you can m using one inch okay m all the way around after aiming i'm now going to place it on the base of this sleeves and i'm going to gather it so it gives me that full effect okay so i'm just going to gather all the way around after gathering i'm going to now close up the sleeves if i attach it to the main bodies so i've gone ahead to 
gathered the sleeves i've aimed i've gathered okay and i've closed the side of the sleeves and i left opening on the armhole area as you can see so what i'm going to do now is to attach these sleeves to the armhole area of my dress guys and yeah that is all for this tutorial i hope it was helpful don't forget to like this video leave your questions in the comment section thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one